Good evening, <laughs> I suppose. What does it mean? You know, when you, when, good evening. It's something, somewhere between a wish and an observation, isn't it? You say good evening. So you say good evening, and they'll say good evening. As in, that's established, let's move on. <laughs> so sometimes people cut it short, don't they? Just go, evening, which is undeniable. <laughs> you know. Or sometimes you say good afternoon, and they'll go, good morning. Because you got it wrong. <laughs> that happens. Uh, but it's, a bit, it's, it's even weirder as, as an entertainer to come on and wish you a good evening. That's a bit like a doctor coming on and going, you know, when you're ill, doctor coming up to you and going, hope you get well. That's <laughs> <laughs> medicine. Anyway, I was... Uh, uh, sorry, is anyone here from anywhere? <laughs> anyone ever noticed anything ever? <laughs> Life, don't it drag on, hey? <laughs> don't you wish you were dead? So uh, I was walking down the road. Uh, yeah. <laughs> walking down the road the other day. Uh, which road? It's all right, do my own heckles. <laughs> <laughs> Saves time, doesn't it? Uh, same road as ever. Think about it, all roads link up, don't they? There's only one road, topologically. If you can imagine a road that isn't linked to any other roads, it's not a road, is it? It's a runway. <laughs> Walking down the road, and I, I couldn't help noticing how beautiful the world is. How absolutely beautiful. And I thought to myself, why would anyone in their right mind bother to take drugs? And then I remembered I was on drugs. <laughs> that was the reason. Recently, I've been trying to trace back my addictions, and I thought to myself, what was my first addiction? And I thought, of course, air. <laughs> uh, followed by milk. And like a fool, I mixed them. And, uh, a couple of years ago, I gave up smoking, and I took up telling people I'd given up smoking. <laughs> as an alternative addiction, because, you know, you get a buzz out of it. Tell a friend, I've given up, they go, well done, pat you on the arm sometimes, you feel good. But it's like a fag, where it's off after about five minutes, got to find another friend. <laughs> Pretty soon you're running out of friends, you know, it's just acquaintances, I've given up smoking, who are you, all that. <laughs> Turned out I hadn't given up smoking at all, I'd just taken up telling people, I was giving up between puffs, <laughs> oh, oh, back on. And I still smoke, but I cut down with the aid of this device. If you are a smoker and you want to cut down or quit, I say get one of these, a harmonica. You can't have a habit vacuum. You need something to do with the hands and the mouth. This fills that gap, right? Suck in, blow out. <laughs> See? Instead of getting cancer, get a note. Very nice. <laughs> the thing I have discovered is harmonica players are actually less welcome than smokers at most restaurants. <laughs> it's, it's all over the world now. You know, no smoking in bars. Not only that, they won't let you take a drink in the tobacconists. You know, where's it going to end? No javelin at the opera? <laughs> anyway, uh, this one's called Stop the War. Stop the war. Stop the war. Stop the war or I'll keep playing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, on that subject, I did go on that war march the other year, uh, the pro-war one, not very well attended. <laughs> well, we won. Mm. <laughs> uh, I've got children. Sounds a bit like I've got lice, doesn't it? <laughs> might have lice, might be connected. The thing about children, you know, well, when we first born was born, once you've had children, take more interest in them. When my first born child was born, uh, came out of the hospital, tiny little baby. Baby's really small, but they come with a lot of equipment. You've got a baby that size, you've got a room full of stuff they need. Like <laughs> a special seat for the car, a cot, a pram, a thing that goes over them and dangles, sterilizers for their bottles. They're eating maggots off the carpet the next minute, but in between you must sterilize their bottles, it's very important. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in a cot, they never sleep in the cot. Well, you start, they start the night in the cot by using their magical baby powers. By the end of the night, they end up in the bed. You think three of you in a bed, you all lie in lines when you make best use of the space. Babies rotate, so the feet press in the father's ribs and the head points towards. It's boo boo. <laughs> and we came out of the hospital, tiny little baby, and uh, we got in the taxi. And the, the taxi driver, as soon as we got in, we set off. The taxi driver goes, What is it, boy or girl? And I said, uh, Girl. And he goes, Oh, yeah, I've got girls. You know, they steal. <laughs> <laughs> Since then, I've asked girls, You know, do you ever steal? No, 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 no. From your dad? Well, it's not stealing. 